All right, we're back with another post commentary game, and it's not looking too good here. Some expensive migrating birds, the sideways gray heron, ospreys, an okay wetland bird, and the expensive scissor tail flycatcher is a good card, but right now it's just too expensive and doesn't do too much for us in the early game. So there are some options here. There is a fish in the tray. I could grab that fish and throw it on the Grey Heron. I could also throw it on the Osprey, gain extra fish, and then play the Grey Heron. That feels a little clunky to me. Doesn't feel like a good start, even though it wouldn't be absolutely terrible. Uh, bonus card options are Bird Bander and Ecologist. I'm going to go with Ecologist here because that's a pretty decent card in general an easy two points and usually an easy four points and with a start like this you just don't know what's going to happen so it's kind of nice to have a bonus card that can just account for any situation that might pop up and i'm really deliberating over this gray heron but in the end i decided to keep four food and the osprey along with ecologist i'm going second here the Eurasian Nuthatch is kind of the obvious first pick. It's a good forest body. Uh, with my opponent going first, they could very likely grab that themselves. I'm really not minding the look of Burrowing Owl here. It's a very solid five point body. That star nest always comes in handy in heavy games like this one. And my opponent did leave the Nuthatch, so I'm just going to grab it here myself. There I see my opponent took fish on their first activation, so that signals that they have something like a Great Crested Creep or a Black Throated Diver, that uh, archetype of good wetland card dropper that requires two fish. So that is a little more demoralizing for me here with this start. We reveal the common Nightingale, and honestly I don't feel too bad about that. Now, if my opponent wants to grab that and hand out some valuable food, I am all for that. I plan on being a little aggressive with my Osprey here, even though I really don't have an outlet for the fish right now. So if my opponent can reciprocate with more valuable food, I will really appreciate that. So my opponent left the Nightingale, which I was a little bit surprised of. Uh, they do drop the American Coot, which also surprised me because I was expecting something like the Grebe or the Diver there. So I go right for my Burrowing Owl. Uh, that good star nest coming into play for the various rom goals. Like I said, uh, it's a very solid bird and it's a decent first grassland bird to help with the ecologist bonus card. So there we see Eastern Phoebe flip up in the tray after my opponent drew cards. And I'm looking at that for a moment and I say to myself, you know what, if they want to grab that and hand out even more food, I don't feel too bad about that because I'm going to throw it on this nut hatch and I'm going to try to develop this forest out as best I can. So I'll get my food that way. And my opponent did leave the Phoebe here. They gained food themselves. I'm going to grab this rat for my owl. Here we finally see the common nightingale from my opponent. I'm going to reciprocate with my osprey. And we get a free cherry from my opponent here, which is pretty great. I think about the burrowing all, but then I stop to think my opponent only has one platform nest. And that Eastern Phoebe could be very beneficial. I could gain it, play it with one of the cherries I have, lay eggs, have two platform nest birds for the round goal, and generate the worm that I need for my burrowing all. So that's what I decide to do. So that Phoebe ends up being a clutch little grab here at the end of the round. I do hand out the fish off the Osprey, even though I have no real need for it at the moment. And I'm just thinking about using that to accelerate my game uh, to help like force down a bird. And I'm not really caring too much about the assistance that I'm giving to my opponent with the fish. Uh, they're able to generate food with the common Nightingale. So they will hopefully reciprocate a little bit. Here they do play the Black Throated Diver, as I suspected that they had. Here comes the Phoebe as planned. So there my opponent draws cards and reveals Savvy's Warbler in the tray, and I think about that for a minute, 
I don't really think about it for too long. I'm going to win this wrong goal. I have to lay eggs here. I do have the option of spending that extra fish from the Osprey on an extra egg. Um, I'm not going to do that because, like I said, I want to try to maintain that food supply. And I deliberate over whether I want to utilize the Savvies to not only gain cards myself, but to also hand cards to my opponent. You could make the argument here that they're already card rich, so it doesn't matter that you're handing them extra cards. And I'm starved for cards, so I need it. But I decide to throw caution to the wind and gamble. And we are rewarded with the Violet Green Swallow here in the round two tray which will definitely help us see more cards and score points in our grasslands. Now, we were able to grab those four points for the round one goal, which was the point of the whole initiative there. And I do hand out the fish. And that could be utilized to cover the second worm on the swallow here. That swallow could also go into the wetlands uh, to help bolster my card draw capability. But I think at this point, I'm kind of putting together the engine that I want to have for the game. And I'm going to really rely on the Swallow in the Grasslands to help me see more cards. So I've kind of limped into round two here. And I'm going to rely on this Swallow to try to save me. My opponent draws cards again. We see another Hummingbird. Little Bustard isn't terrible. House Sparrow is a decent body, but it's not going to do much for us here. And now I have a choice to make. Am I going to force down the Swallow? Or am I going to play my Burrowing Owl? If I play the Swallow, I still want to play my Burrowing Owl. I don't want to tuck it. So I'm going to have to draw cards again here in order to have fuel for the Swallow. So I decide to play the Burrowing Owl, and I decide to use the two fish to cover the cost of the worm and that frees up the worm for my violet green swallow here so if I lay eggs one more time I can gain the second worm off the Phoebe and play the swallow so that situation is where the aggressive use of that Osprey ahead of the cards I've drawn paid off because I was able to save that worm for the violet green swallow here here my opponent hands out a fish which is kind of ironic I think about forcing down this swallow with that fish but I think about it a little bit more and I'm going to preserve my food since I don't have a card to tuck on the swallow anyway and I'm going to gain that second worm from the swallow here and there we see my opponent drops a bluebird into Franklin skull which is at first, it's a little bit demoralizing, but then you think about it, it's, they really have neutralized their wetland birds here. So here we draw Dunnick and Black Skimmer, and this is looking really good. The Skimmer is a very decent body. Uh, we have the fish on deck to play it, uh, and here's kind of another situation where being aggressive with the fish here. Uh, has helped us maintain that food supply. Uh, Dunnick is looking very good now in the face of my opponent's Franklin's Gull. And my opponent plays Vox Swift. Skimmer's going to go down here. It also has synergy with my bonus card, helping to fill out that second column and the round three goal of Birds in the Wetlands. So my opponent there with the Vox Swift is looking to tuck excess cards for extra food, which makes sense. He's going to have some XX cards thanks to the Franklin's Gull. Uh, but to go back to that Franklin's Gull, you know, all that investment my opponent had in the Coot and the Diver, that kind of goes out the window now. They kind of did their job, and the Diver is still a five-point body, so that's good. Uh, but now he's going to... Uh, rely on their grasslands pulling a pivot here and they don't really have any point scoring potential and if they spend an egg on the goal they're only scoring two points and they might be handing out a food to me so thinking about it from that perspective 
there that grasslands isn't that threatening yet. Especially since I have this Dunnock on deck, and we do get the clutch wheat for the Dunnock. Uh, sitting there thinking about that, uh, looking at that Dunnock in my hand, I'm thinking to myself, I really need a wheat from their Nightingale, and my opponent obliges us here. So I'm going to lay eggs here, and we do get a lucky cash on the Owl. And I deliberate on the Worm, I do decide to hand it out, and laying eggs here helps us pressure the round goal and with the way things are going to pan out here we can play this dunnock on our last activation and even if my opponent lays eggs the dunnock is still going to get us the wrong goal win so this is going to be a very clutch play the dunnock was a very good top deck that card doesn't often get time to shine but this is that moment for the Dunnick. There we see a Pygmy Nuthatch, so my opponent is kind of doubling down on their forest tucking food generation. Interesting plays there. I don't think I've ever seen both of those birds played at the same time. But adding some point scoring capability to their forest engine. So that kind of tells me that they're spreading their power around a little bit. They're, they don't have the cards to really fully develop this grasslands, so I don't necessarily have to worry about that so much. Uh, the Dunnock does go down as planned, and I am going to pick up three eggs here from my opponent's three grassland activations. One nice thing about the Dunnock here, like I said, uh, even if my opponent lays eggs here, I'm still going to win the wrong goal thanks to the Dunnock. So they're really painted into a corner here. Here come the three eggs. And the win on the wrong goal. And there we see Purple Martin in the tray. That is going to be the perfect card for my opponent to throw down in their grasslands with their Franklin's Gull. So that's a bit of a bummer. I don't mind the look of that Oyster Catcher. It's another solid wetland body. Works toward the wrong goal. Helps me further develop my Ecologist bonus card. And I can get the worms off my Phoebe. And surprisingly, my opponent leaves the Purple Mart. Now we got that free worm from their nightingale from their last activation of round two. Uh, they did take the gain food action here and I was a little bit confused by that. That's why I'm kind of looking at their uh, forest here. But they have left Purple Martin behind. So I decided to grab it along with the oyster catcher. And I'm going to give priority to the Martin over the swallow because it only costs a single worm. So I can play the Purple Martin into my grasslands and then I have the worms to play the oyster catcher to gain fuel for my tucking birds in the grasslands. There we see my opponent drops a Barrow's Golden Eye, which is an interesting play. I'm going to respond with my oyster catcher, burning the eggs up the Dunnock. And there we pull Benelli's Eagle, best oyster catcher ever. Black Headed Gull is also a great card, but I think it's kind of late in the game. It's not really going to do much for either of us. Uh, the Golden Eye is an interesting play for my opponent. I am trying to develop this Grasslands. So it makes sense. It's a wetland bird, works toward the wrong goal. And this is really shaping up to be a very interesting game. We both have mixed boards. We're not really leaning on any one super engine. It's just a little bit all over all the habitats for both of us. And there we see a Bell's Vireo on my opponent's board. Good bonus card bird. Those always get scary at this point in the game. But we've got Benelli's in our back pocket. There's the Bell's Vireo. And here comes the Purple Martin. Clearing those eggs off the Dunnock. And the Carolina Wren is an interesting option here because you can play that and pick up two cards, and those two cards could go to Tux on the Benelli's Eagle. And it is a cavity nest for the Ron 4 goal as well. 
And we do have the cherry, so it's a compelling option here. My opponent lays eggs. And I go to draw cards, discarding an egg off the Dunnock for the extra card. I decide to pass on the Carolina Wren here for a better option. And we do get the American Robin. I deliberate about the fish here. I decide to deny it. Because we're kind of past the point where I need to be overly aggressive with food. And we have the cherry on deck for the Robin. So we gambled a little bit more. And it paid off again. How that single food cost Tuckingbird can go right in the grasslands to supplement my existing engine. And with two activations left in the round, we can play the Robin and Benelli's and hopefully win this wrong goal. And there my opponent drops Eastern Imperial Eagle. So here comes the Robin and thankfully we have Benelli's. So here we have Battle of the Big Eagles. There's a look at my opponent's board, that big eagle sitting there. Very solid looking board being put together by my opponent here. And now it's feeling pretty close. I, I feel a lot better than I did at the start of the game. I've been able to fight back fairly effectively. Here comes Benelli's to win the wrong goal. And I kind of deliberate about what cards I actually want to tuck here. Kind of try to decide, do I want to utilize the Bee Eater? Probably not at this point in the game. It's not going to do too much for me. That double worm cost is a pain. It is a cavity nest for the round four goal. But so is the Swallow. But I do decide to tuck the Swallow. At this point in the game... It's not going to score me enough points once I do manage to get the two worms to get it down. Um, I don't... There really is no justification here. It's kind of... And here we're going to pick up two eggs from the Dunnock. Uh, I really have no intention of playing the Bee Eater either. But that's just the card I kept. And we do win this wrong goal thanks to Benelli's Eagle. Spotted Owl is looking fairly good in the tray. Cedar Waxwing is always interesting, but there's just not going to be enough time to get the food and throw it down and have the cards to feed it. And here I'm just going to lay eggs, and I decide at this point, and then we see Atlantic Puffin, and it hurts so much to tuck the Puffin, but as I was saying, at this point in the game, it's all about leveraging this grassland. It's not a complete grassland, but it's a pretty good grassland. And the burrowing all is continuing to fail us over and over again. It's unfortunate that it's kind of stuck on one die here. Uh, doesn't look like my opponent is going to be gaining too much food. Although they have zero food here. And there's five activations left in the round, so really anything can happen. And they seem to have a commanding lead on the round goal. Plenty of birds with cavity nests. So really they just need to spam eggs here and get those eggs in the nests. And there we're just going to lay eggs and fill up our cavity nest as best we can. I think about the yellow-billed cuckoo here. Uh, I feel like my opponent might want to try to grab that and play it to further shave points off my grasslands. I take a look here. They have zero food. So I decide to pass on the cuckoo. I'm not going to deny it. I'm just going to keep digging into the deck. And if my opponent takes the time to gain food here, I kind of want that to happen because they're scoring less points. Owl lets us down again. And no food from the Phoebe. And really, with regard to that yellow-billed cuckoo as well, I mean, there's only... My opponent has four activations left in the game. So they're not really going to get a huge amount of eggs from it. So it's not as scary. But I do remember feeling like that Borrow's Golden Eye was probably going to win my opponent the game here. Just that extra egg generation. 
on that extra four egg cavity nest on that nice five point body. Uh, I really kind of felt like the game was slipping away from me here. And my opponent lays eggs and they do spend the egg on two cards and they do take the cuckoo. And I start to regret my decision on leaving it behind here. It just feels kind of bad. And we just do what we need to do here. Lay eggs, tuck cards, and miss on the burrowing all. My opponent still has zero food, so if they want to play that cuckoo, they have to take the gain food action here. But they will be able to score two points by tucking on their two forest birds, and they'll generate extra food by doing that. So they have a very strong gain food action here. They could gain up to five total food if they discard the card to the forest. My opponent did gain the food. And, of course, the more they stay away from their grasslands, the less beneficial my Dunnock becomes. And the Owl misses once again. Worst Owl ever. Looking at my opponent's board, I kind of take a moment here to think about playing the Hooded Merganser for its cavity nest. But there's just not enough time, it's not really worth it. And I end up ignoring the worm here. And there we see the cuckoo from my opponent. Uh, they have only one activation left in the game, as well as me. Uh, so, looking at that, it's like, okay, well, they're only going to get one extra egg, so it doesn't feel as bad. And it makes me wonder why they even bothered to play it, and then I begin to suspect that that's a bonus card play that they did. And we just end our game like we've played the whole round four, lay eggs and tuck cards. So my opponent didn't really have any type of engine to speak of, really spread his power across the habitats, but it worked. It looks strong, his board feels strong, uh, it feels like I might have lost this game, uh, but we also have a very strong board. We did put together a strong Grasslands engine at the end of the game. It wasn't a totally complete 5 bird engine, but it's still uh, 4, 5, 6, maybe 7 points off the Owl. Of course the Owl failed us a bunch, but uh, that round 4 we scored like 30 points in the last 5 activations. And that is not trivial. And there we pick up three eggs on the Dunnock, but we only have room for two. And we do lose the round goal by four eggs. Alright, if you like that grassland versus grassland, eagle versus eagle action, do me a favor and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And let's see the damage. I feel like I've lost this game. But we do come back on the wrong goals. It's going to be close. We're neck and neck. And the tuck cards managed to win it. And fighting over the wrong goals managed to pull this game off for me, I believe. 101 to 96. And my opponent had diet specialist and ethologist. And that explains the cuckoo in the forest there for an extra two points. All right, thanks for watching everybody.